Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're meeting the world's first cloned wolf dog. You previously met the fire wolf. Well, today we reveal that she is actually a clone and in fact one of six. Today we reveal the truth about Phoenix and her five sisters. Their story has hit the worldwide press due to the beauty of these six pups and also because they are the first wolf dogs in history to be cloned. Today we're going to find out everything about the process of cloning your dog when it passes away and also everything about this breathtaking photogenic set of wolf dogs. No, your eyes aren't deceiving you. Yes, six identical sisters, all cloned from the same dog. Don't go away. We previously introduced you to Phoenix the Fire Wolf, a beautiful wolf dog with a rare coat mutation which makes her look like a fantasy wolf. But what we didn't mention was that she is the world's first cloned wolf dog along with five other female siblings. Ember, Astra, Autumn, Sersha, and Juniper. All identical, all female and all beautiful. The sisters are all cloned from one identical dog called Willow who Courtney lost in a freak car accident which left her bereft. Cloning is indeed a controversial and highly expensive practice which can cost over $100,000 and involves taking DNA from a donor dog and reproducing clones in a laboratory. Once the egg has been jump started into growing into a fetus, it is implanted into a host mother dog who births the pups. In a previous Animal Watch episode, I revealed the controversial issues surrounding cloning dogs in Korea and why I believed some of the surrogate mums were taken from dogs bred for the meat trade. This really upset me and I even went on national TV to speak out against it, especially after finding out that there are numerous non-perfect pups that are disposed of before the perfect dog is created. Courtney has told me that cloning has come a long way since then and the United States cloning company she has used is ethical and no dogs are abused in the process. So today I will be listening to Courtney's side of her story and why she believes her American method of cloning is more ethical than Asia's one and why. To do this, we are in the beautiful Cotswolds of England in order to find out everything about how she cloned Phoenix and her sisters from her beloved Willow. Hello. Hello! Hey, up, up. Come on, come say hi. Come say hi. Up, 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 up. Hey, Phoenix, how are you? How are you? How are you doing? Hey, nice to oh, see you again. again. Back with the beautiful Phoenix. Yes, so nice to be back. Yeah, we're in the Cotswolds today. Yes. And we've got this beautiful yellow sandstone and it matches Phoenix beautifully, yes. doesn't it? She yeah. fits right in. Phoenix, you were so popular that I decided that we would come back and we would make <laughs> another episode on you. And do you know what it's going to be about today? It's going to be about something very special about Phoenix that you probably don't know. And we're going to tell everybody about that today, aren't we? Aren't we? You're going to have some more cheese? Come on, come on in. How about shake? Oh. oh, thank you so much. So let's go and find out everything about her and her siblings, which you will not believe. <laughs> come on, come on. Well, everybody, as you know, Phoenix has been so incredibly popular on this channel. We just had to come back, didn't we, and see her again. Except today, I'm going to let you in to a very special secret about her that perhaps you didn't know. She is the world's first cloned wolf dog. Tell me the story behind why she is a clone. Willow was the original dog that we had 
and she was basically my soul dog and my first wolf dog and I've never really had a connection or experience like that before. She was, you know, my everything. It was Thanksgiving and we had a dog sitter that we found. She had five star ratings. I didn't understand at the time that you really can't trust people with this breed. You have to be very, very careful. And she, I guess, left the gate open and she got out in the middle of Los Angeles and got hit by a car at age two. So it was really traumatic for everyone involved and especially for me. You're absolutely grieving. You've just found your dog dead, right. dead in the middle of the road. No, no she was alive and <gasps> so I wasn't sure but I picked her up and I could feel her heartbeat and she was still <sighs> breathing oh my God. with me holding her in the back seat rushing her to the vet and I think when she knew that she was with me and she knew that she was safe she passed away oh god that must have been I, yeah, I can't even was, imagine it was how awful horrible that must yeah feel. there's nothing worse how long did the realization come into your head? Oh my God, I have to just take a sample I didn't now. even know at the time. At the time, I just wanted to take her to the vet to save her. My dad had told me I'll do whatever I can to help continue her legacy. The vet took a sample. Wow. We refrigerated the uh, samples overnight and sent them the next day. You don't have to clone right away. They just keep the DNA for you. And then if you ever decide to make that decision, then you can. How long did you wait before you actually made that conscious decision that you <sighs> wanted to go ahead and actually start the cloning they said there was a long waiting list so i said okay you you know just put me on the oh waiting God. list and it took about almost a year almost nine months yeah so how much does it cost just to store the sample a bit over a grand and you pay like a 100 dollars fee every year after every that so year. it's actually pretty okay. affordable just to store the dna but to actually clone your dog that costs fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. yeah yeah it's a big expense some right. people can't afford it you're very lucky that you did actually right. have the opportunity to be able yeah, to actually blew do my this. savings <laughs> Well, a lot of people out there haven't got a clue about how to clone your dog. Right. So what is the process? Basically what they ask for is a couple of small skin biopsy samples in different parts of the body. If a dog has passed away, they ask for like the tip of the ear or under the belly or like near one of their legs. And then from there, they need to culture that sample for a couple of weeks. When they get to anywhere from 500 million to a billion cells, then they store that because then they have enough cells mm. for cloning and they insert those cells into an egg that has been totally emptied of DNA. Okay. So it's completely ready for that DNA of Willow to be in an egg. And then they use anywhere from one to 10 eggs in a surrogate because not all of them might take. Okay. So it's very similar to IVF with humans. Right. So you could put 10 eggs and maybe only two take. We got very lucky and with you, six. How many, six. Six. And they all look like her, right? Yes. So she has five other sisters, all identical. So technically it'd be considered sex tuplets. Oh my goodness <laughs> me. And they're all sisters. So yes. they all came out girls. Yes. So when you clone a female, they always be, be a females. female. Just like identical twins in humans, there's very slight small differences that only the owners really can tell, but just someone off the street wouldn't be able to tell them apart. How about the surrogate mom? She doesn't have to look anything like the dog. No, the size has to be similar though. Okay. And then when the puppies are born, mm -hmm. they're born at the clinic. They have a clinic in Texas and they have one in New York. The mother got transported from New York to Texas because wolf dogs are legal in Texas. Okay. So she gave birth in Texas. They spent a couple weeks at the vet office, you know, to make sure all were healthy and well and mom did phenomenally. Phoenix and her five sisters got raised on the CEO of the company's personal ranch. Okay. So they were surrounded by people visiting and other farm animals. And I feel like that helped tremendously with and, their development. And he had them in the house with him. Yeah, he, in like, the house, outside, dogs. playing in the ranch. They had constant interaction with okay. new people. To help with socialization, especially in this breed, I told them how important it is that they get socialized at a young mm. age. And it was fascinating to me because Willow, you know, might've had a different upbringing her first eight weeks of life that the clones had a, and a totally different yeah, experience. Yeah, and that makes the personality completely Com different. It can, yeah. so absolutely. So they might look exactly like your Willow, right. but they may not right. end up and all behaving the, exactly. the same. Exactly, yeah. and each girl has some slight differences in temperament and personality, which is that mix of nature and nurture. When did you go to look at the puppies to say, I'm gonna take 
one they, home or all of them they, home. No, they, they give you all of them. No they matter, give them No up. matter how many are there. They drove all of the puppies to me personally at my house. And then the puppies spent a lot of time with us at home. And I had some close friends with wolf dog experience that I knew were ready to take on one of her sisters. Finding out there were six is obviously like a miracle and I would love to keep all six if I lived in Alaska or had a sled team, yeah. you know, or had <laughs> acres and acres of land, I would have kept all, but I wanted each girl mm. to have the experience that I did with Willow where it's that one-on-one -on -one bond mm. and not having like sibling rivalry or like I wouldn't be able to give six puppies no. the same amount of attention. I've got to say I would find it incredibly hard to pick so it was. tell me how you picked Phoenix I, and, and what was it that made you pick her? Right so that was I think the hardest part of the entire experience where I was just so emotional and confused and didn't know how to choose so I thought I'm just gonna let the puppy choose me. And that's exactly what I did. So I spent time with all of them equally. I was playing with all of them and I felt the most connection to her and one other sister the most, even though I really truly love them all equally. Mm. It was so difficult because they'll turn out so different from puppy to adult. And I just wanted the best fit for each family mm. and for me. And so Phoenix actually, ended up being the closest in terms of she fell asleep in my lap oh. and she gave me the most kisses and seemed to be the most interested and fascinated with me and so I let her choose me. So all of the six girls are similar to Willow in their own way and for different reasons but I would say that she has the most traits and similar personality to Willow but I would say she is a lot more social. Did you ever DNA test Willow? Yes. You did? Yes. What Viagen does is to prove that they're an identical clone is they go to UC Davis, which is actually where I studied, and they do a entire genetic report of like every single possible like genetic marker and DNA to make sure that it's absolutely exact. And they show you all that paperwork and it was identical. I'm gonna have to ask this question. The first sheep that was ever cloned was Dolly. Yes. Okay, and as you know, she had a very short life expectancy. Yes. Has it worried you that Phoenix might have a shorter life expectancy? Yes, so that was one of my first questions with the company. I didn't want to go through this entire process and then have a dog that might be unhealthy or not have as good quality of life or not live as long. So that was one of my questions. And they've done actually quite a bit of studies since Dolly the Sheep. Obviously, we don't know anything for sure, but based on all the studies they've done, cloned dogs since Dolly or cloned farm animals have actually had normal lifespans and been able to reproduce normally and not been like sterile, for example. But I asked Viagen, hey, specifically within Viagen and your company with dogs, and even cats and horses. Have any of those cloned animals have shorter life expectancy or health issues? And they said, actually, no, we haven't had any dogs mm -hmm. that have passed away early or showed any signs of a health issue. It's very important to make sure that the dog that you're cloning is actually healthy and sound in terms of their own genetic makeup. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're putting all this time, money and effort into a dog that might have a genetic issue and pass away early anyway. And of course, the thing that I find mind blowing is the color. Yes. And we touched on this in her previous episode. She's got a very, very rare coat mutation. Yes. The Embark company can't even figure it out when we did her DNA test. When I asked for more detail on her coat coloring, they're like, we don't have an answer. Like yeah. we can't figure that out. Like it has to be some bizarre mutation that's like very, very complicated in genetics. Mm. So. And that's what makes her and her sisters so mind-blowingly beautiful to look at is right. this color and these eyes. Obviously, when this happened, she must have been a bit of a celebrity. I've done interviews, I've done live television. They've done like all sorts of episodes on her. My photography page was all to just really showcase our hiking adventures and my photography passion for animals and nature. It kind of blew up and people will ask, oh, did you clone your dog like for Instagram or all of that? And that actually has like nothing to do no, with it. No, because you're just a photographer and anyway. I'm just a photographer and that's what I'm passionate about. And so Social media can actually be, I can get burnt out very easily from it, but it's actually, it was more about my personal relationship with my dog. I'm just grateful to have her in my life and have Willow's legacy continue, but this 
relationship with Phoenix is obviously unique, just like my relationship with Willow yeah. is unique. So. Yeah, and so I think whatever you feel at the beginning does change when you actually start to find out that this dog is a completely different individual right. Right. Um, to your old dog. So when you clone your dog, you are not going to be getting the dog that passed. So people really have to remember that. And it's very, very true. It's all about the way they're raised. But she is absolutely beautiful. And I'm glad that she has brought some joy back into your life yes, after absolutely. the morning. In conclusion, I can understand why Courtney wanted to do what she did. And I was honestly tempted when I lost my dog, Kiyoshi, a few years ago. I am still sitting on the fence with the practice as I do worry about the donor mums and any puppies that don't quite make the cut. But equally, I do understand what it's like to lose a heart dog and how it can destroy your life. I wish Phoenix and her sisters a full and healthy life as they are beautiful and deserve it. Let me know if you've lost a dog in the comments below and how it made you feel and if you ever were tempted by cloning. If people want to find out more about where they can see Phoenix and you've got some of her siblings are on there and then right. you've got your other wolf dogs yes. on there, what is your handles? It's Wander with Willow. That's our Instagram. And we also have a website, wanderwithwillow.com. And then all the beautiful photos are on there. Yes, and... our whole goal is to just inspire other people and everyone to get out there with their pet or with their dog. Yeah and just get out in nature and just like explore their relationship with their dog. And if you would like to find out more about Phoenix, we've got the last episode she did a few weeks ago. I'm gonna put an information bar in the top corner. You can click on it and you can find out everything about her, and her life and what it's like to raise a beautiful wolf dog like that. And if you enjoyed this episode, then be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner and tune in every week where I'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now. <laughs>